that actually roots in pretty easily. A lot of nurseries don't want you to know this because that's a lot of free plants and a lot of loss of business. Today we are giving my containers a refresh for spring without spending a penny. Here is one of my containers. This one is in my cottage garden and this is its permanent home. And I've taken everything out of it. And we're going to fill this container with spring flowers and foliage without spending a single penny, without spending a dime, without spending anything. First thing I'm going to do is cut them a little more narrow. I feel like these plants are growing too wide. So we're going to just take them down a notch, taking a good chunk off here. Then I'm going to take off the leaves that really don't look too hot and create a bit of a stem at the bottom with no leaves or few leaves. This is my little cutting of Dusty Miller. Dusty Miller is one plant. Some places it's perennial, some places it's annual. So all you really need is a nice container of potting soil and your plant. I've actually done this in the ground quite a few times too with no rooting hormone, nothing fancy, just a good hole in the ground, stick your plant in, cover it up, and you've got a new plant. It doesn't work every time, but for the frequency that it does work, I mean you're getting free plants, so you cannot lose. We're going to do a border of Dusty Miller in my containers with some bulbs. I'm just going to take the Dusty Miller and place them around the perimeter of the container here. All done with the Dusty Millers, now we harvest bulbs. We've got an assortment of bulbs here. There are tulips, there are other bulbs. The tulips I planted last fall and I expect that they're supposed to be purple and white. So we're gonna add some of those to the container. Just got a little shovel here to dig. You can see they've started sprouting. Just make sure we go deep enough. Here we go. There's a nice bulb there. And we've got another one here. I think we want at least three, maybe more. So we're gonna keep on digging here. A little deeper. And that should be a sufficient quantity of bulbs for this container right here. I think we're gonna end up with four. That's fine. Don't have to be odd numbers. Now we're going to, we're gonna place them in the container, dig them in. Oh, there's a random bulb here, something small. We'll just stick that into the ground pot. There's this one here. Got this, got this little wild card bulb. We're gonna stick that in the container too. Maybe in the middle, not sure what it is. Could be a mini daffodil. Next, we're going to add some pansies. These were actually super clearance last fall. Can't remember the price, but they were really, really cheap. So since I planted them in the fall, they have really put on a ton of growth with our warmer February we've been having. It, these pansies are getting so lush. So we're gonna transplant some into the container. There we go. Ooh, that's a good root ball. Look at that. Gonna dig ourselves a little hole here, get those pansies into the pot. Move the tulips over a little more. I think we could probably stuff more bulbs in here if we crowd them a little bit. Put in that pansy plant, cover it with some soil. We're in one of the 
crazy bulb borders now. We're gonna do a little more harvesting. I'm eyeing these ones that are growing a little clo too close to the house. They're not gonna get enough water here and probably not enough light. So we're gonna transplant them. I think these might be bluebells. Bluebells are hyacinths. So they're gonna come into the pot with everything else. Did I get the root? Shoot, we broke the root. Well, that one's not gonna work out. Let's see, I probably need a deeper shovel here. Maybe that's why they're not going to. Uh... Oh, we got it. Gonna get these guys planted in. Looks like they need to be pretty deep. Well, honestly, I don't know if those ones are going to work out. That doesn't look super good. Hmm. I think if I planted it deeper, that might be how we, might be how we can do this. Either that or it's not going to work out. We'll see here. I think that's going to work, actually. It took a lot of digging to get deep enough in the pot, but I think it's going to work fine. And there we have it. Pot number one is complete. I love how it turned out. I think it's going to be wild, wacky, beautiful, colorful, all the things. Let's go do another container for free. We're in the front garden now and we've got another container to make over. Here's the container we're going to be working with. I don't even honestly feel like topping this up with dirt. I mean, I could, maybe I should. Maybe I should top this up with a little bit of dirt. Oh, I forgot. Oh, right. I did forget. There's gladioli bulbs in here, but I'm actually just going to leave them be. And I think I think I'm gonna grab some garden soil, not even potting soil, just soil from my back garden, top it up a little bit, and then we're gonna add some bulbs from around the yard. We're just gonna top this pot with some soil from the vegetable garden. There we go. Oh, that looks, oops, there goes my bucket. This looks a little not, looks a little more fresh now, this container. And we will start finding some bulbs to put in here. We're on the gravel pathway now and we're gonna harvest some of these daffodils for the container. Got my little shovel. And let's get to work here. I'm gonna go for these guys. There we go. That looks like it came out pretty well. Oh no, shoot. I'm butchering the bulbs today. Change of plan since I have butchered multiple blob. Since I have butchered multiple b since I have butchered multiple bulbs since I got started despite the fact I didn't pay anything, they were free. We're going to go for plants. We're going to transplant we're going to transplant some pansies and some English daisies and we're going to add some foliage, a new design, something that doesn't involve butchering bulbs. We are back in the cottage garden and we have quite a few English daisies here, more pansies. So we're going to harvest those for this container. Start with the one right here. It's looking rather plump and lush. Again, planted in the fall and has really put on growth in the spring. And all of the green you see, these are English daisies. And we're gonna take a few of these, a few clumps, and put them into the container. They seem to tolerate full sun to part shade and that is what we're giving them. container planted up. This is the pansy we harvested. I'm going to dig that in. 
think we're going to put it in the center of the container since it is nice and lush and plump. Next, we're going to dig in some English daisies. I've got the camera in a rather awkward position. I'm holding it with one hand on the tripod and I'm going to plant with the other hand. Here's one of the English daisies we dug up. Stick that in. We've got some more English daisies here. So we've got the pansy and the English daisies planted. I'll show you what it looks like. Here's the container planted with a pansy in the middle and English daisies on the side. I think we want to add something taller now. Either I go back and attempt more bulb harvesting, hopefully not butchering, or we could potentially we could add some foliage cuttings. I'm thinking Pyrrhus might be good or some rhododendron. Let's get the clippers and see what we can do. First, some water. Before we start clipping and chopping, the plants need water before I forget. Here is my one of my purest bushes and I think we're going to harvest some of that for this container. I'm going to try to see if I can find one with a decent amount of blooms, a couple branches, and see how that looks. Again, I'm doing all of this one-handed, so it can be quite awkward when you're filming and also doing the actual project, but we'll give it a shot. This one here looks pretty nice. Gonna clip it far down like that. So we've got a piece here. We can go for two or three pieces of foliage. I think we'll take one from a different section, maybe over here. I think that might be enough. Let's see what we can do with this. Got our container here. Let's see how this is going to look when we put it in. Reposition that a little bit more. Well, I like it so far. I feel like it needs a little bit more of something here. Now I'm deciding if we should go Rodo, if we should go Dusty Miller, or something else. So let's see what we can find to fill this in just a little bit more. I just had another idea. This might be a complete fail. I've never tried this. I didn't research it. I didn't Google it. I've never seen anybody do this, but let's give it a try. This is a wallflower plant. In my area, zone seven to eight, Vancouver Island, it is a evergreen. All year it has foliage, absolutely beautiful. And I wanna see if we can put it in the dirt and it'll survive at least the spring. This might even be something that's propagating, that you can prop, prop propagationable. I don't know that you can divide by propagation. There's a term for that. Let's cut off a piece here and see how this is gonna go. I'm not sure if you want a woody stem versus a green. I'm gonna guess if you wanna propagate, you need woody. So let's take a woody stem. Now I did cut something here. It's not coming out. There it is. There's a woody stem. We're gonna take a few of these and see what we can do with that. Back in our container, we've got the wallflower plant. Just gonna stick some of that in here. You can get kind of creative with layering when you've got all these different greens. And I'm not sure if I should break this one up or stick it in the way it is. Let's try just sticking it in. Hmm, I don't know if I like that. I think I might break it up a little bit. So this is what we're looking like. Now, I think I might make a little flower sacrifice and get some actual color from the garden to put in here. One of the few pansies that is actually blooming in my rock garden. These self-seed every season and we're going to sacrifice one 
for the sake of the container, there will be hundreds of them coming up soon. So let's do this. We've got our colorful little pansy. And we're going to add the pansy to the little container here. Our one little pop of color. We're going to add some of these from my fairy garden collection. I've had these for quite some time for a little pop of color. And I'm going to see if this is something I would want in here. I'm not sure if it's going to be a welcome addition or not. You know what? I think I like it. I kind of want something here, but I think it's going to fill in. It's kind of wacky, it's kind of wild, but it was completely free and I like it. I hope this video has inspired you on how you can get creative on a budget, still have some beautiful containers and not spend any money. Just go look in your garden, ask your neighbors if they have any cuttings you can have. There are lots of ways you can have containers that don't cost anything and are beautiful. This flower fairy saw that there was a new spring container being constructed and could not miss out on the action. So she is the new guardian of this container. She brought her cursed magical mushrooms that caused her amputation. She brought them with her. She could not be without those magical mushrooms. So here she is, she's going to guard this container for the spring season.